I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it um, just because uh, this has the in, uh, person at the board meeting last week who spoke um, did make a very good point uh, about a lot of the problems with public education it doesn't belong at the local level. The problems actually belong in Harrisburg and that's where the changes happen to, to be. Um, so we wanted, as Ming and I spoke, we um, wanted to point out one of the biggest problems that public schools have is back in the early days of um, public education, which we only went back to 10-11 because that was my first year. And I don't like to speak before that because I don't, you know, I wasn't part of those decisions. But in 10-11, there was a change made in, in Harrisburg that public, public education at the local level had no control over. It was what we call an unfunded mandate. Um, and it had to do with our retirement system. And we all, anyone in public education is affected by that. It is, you know, did benefit the employees. So I will, you know, put that out there that I did positively affect me, um, but it did hurt local school districts to the negative. So we wanted to show you what those, look, what those decisions in Harrisburg does to the taxpayers, which we have no control over, um, but it does what it does to your taxes. And one of those pieces that does negatively affect public education. So some of what we're gonna show you tonight, just kind of go through that. And it is something that you have to do, but we have no control over. And it's part of that 90% of the budget that we don't have control over. So Ming has put some really nice graphs together as well that help show you some of these pieces. Special ed is another piece that we don't have control over. And that's out of the federal government. Um, where retirement is out of the state and federal is even less controlled than we have at the state level. So the first part that we have tonight on your on your packet is what's called the employer retirement contribution rate. So back in 2010, um, we the employer contribution retirement rate was started out at 5.64%, which means the net cost for the district was that um, we get charged 100%, which would have been double the three, 366,000 but then you get 50% of that back from the state. So that's why we less the, the, the net. So of uh, the district payroll in 2010-11, and remind and mind you at that point in 10-11, you had probably almost um, 60 some people on professional staff more than you have right now. So even though you had a lot more employees in 2010-11 than you currently do in 22, um, you were only paying $366,000 at a 5.64% on the dollar for retirement. Now, fast forward to 21-22 budget year, the one we're currently in right now, for that same dollar, you're paying 34.94% or $2.2 million in retirement alone um, out of district coffers or out of our, out of our budget for retirement on, uh, on all professional staff, on all your parents that are on district payroll, which is one of the reasons why we've outsourced to try and save money. Um, on that, just because of retirement increases alone. And that decision was made in Harrisburg. That was not made at the local level, but it did have a negative effect on the taxpayers in the, in the local districts. So that gives you an example of one thing that was done in Harrisburg that had a negative effect here on the local level. And that's when, when that gentleman spoke at the board meeting last week, that was something that came up that we were talking about that to, just to give you an idea of one decision in Harrisburg and how, how negatively in just you know, basically 11 years, that had a negative effect from $366,000 to $2.2 million with less employees. And that 3.4 will continue to go up to projected about 36, 37, maybe in the next five or six years. I think was the last actuarial percentage, which will show. I think you know, you have the sheet with you. Yeah. 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 What what's it projected out to be? Okay. Uh, for uh, 22, 23 is 35.26 percent, and 23, 24 is 39.69, 24, 25 is 36.05 percent, and 25, 26 36.48 percent. It's just like a, right now, most likely like a like a between one one to two percent every year increase. So even though you have less employees on payroll, that number keeps going up. So that that for, that retirement cost is going to continue to go up for the district, even right. though you have less employees. So that's one of those uncontrollable costs that are, that happens out of Harrisburg. And who determines by how much it goes up? If the run on uh, the PEASERS runs a uh, actuarial cost through the there are there are people who that actually do those projections and based on 
how the they, their investments and the, you know all of that other stuff that goes with how they invested the money and what their projections are. The same thing they do like with healthcare projections and the actuaries. And I don't know if you can explain it better than I can. Ming, that they'll present it like at one point they had us projected to be almost 40 into the 40s and 50 percent, but the market has rebounded better than it was like five or six years ago. Um, so that the numbers have been, they redo them every three to four years and what those projections can be. And then they send them out for, for planning purposes. Do they expect it to ever level out? No. No. So at some point we're just going to be paying every 100% of the. Um, they, they anticipated at some point you'd be originally uh, five or six years ago, they were anticipating it. Districts will cap out at about 50, about 50% 50 of it would come from the districts. For 2002, 2003, it's just 1.15%. 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Just give you an idea of what happens in Harrisburg and how that affects the local level. One of those things that we call um, unfounded mandates, and Mrs. Jackson had sent out a um, from the IU, which we get the mandate updates, some of the mandate changes that were on that list that she had sent out. Um, that has tripled in the last three or four years from the State Department. All of those were unfunded, but unfound, uh, unfunded mandates that we are required to implement, which cost us time and money and teacher training time because we have to follow them because they're required, but they give us no money to implement those. All of that stuff comes out of Harrisburg, but it does affect your bottom line at the district level. So I just give you an idea on that one. I'm not going to dwell on it because it is not good news. Um, but just to give you some other ones, um, just to give you an idea before we get into our, you know, our yeah. numbers as to why some things are the way they are. That's for sure. Yeah. Is there any part of that that school district has any kind of a feedback? And as far as control as, over? Yeah. No. no. So the increase of this is just basically mandated how much you need to increase the mm -hmm. retirement bond? Yep, they give you your numbers. And then when the only thing that PEASERS did was um, uh, two years ago, I think it was maybe three now, I'm getting old. Um, they did change the new hire system that the new people coming in do pay more, which helped lower the percentage the districts pay. There's different rates now, like ours in my era is uh, we contribute 7.5% out of your paycheck, but now the new people contribute like 10% but it doesn't change the district allocation stays the same. Um, so they pay more to hope, hopefully keep that down lower. But the problem with that is the fact that nobody's hiring teachers because for one, there aren't teachers out there because nobody's going into the profession anymore. Um, and then, so you're not having the influx of new teachers because they just don't exist. So the system is very much in balance. And then the way the markets are, that it's, it's too volatile to ever, it's not really recovering the money but they give you the numbers and you have no choice. And then the one thing that the district did probably started in 2014 and have slowly been doing it is when we started to outsource our, our support staff because when we outsource our support staff, we don't pay PEASERS, we don't pay workman's comp, we don't pay liability insurance, we don't pay healthcare. So we pay a, a markup fee, which you've seen in our contracts because you commented on that last spring when we put them through. So yes, we do pay a markup on it, but it's still less than paying the package for benefits and paying all the other stuff that goes along with it. So because you're paying 35% on the dollar for, for PEASERS alone, but you may be only be paying a total package markup of maybe 17 to 20% when you're not paying all the insurances. Because you have to remember that the district contribution in healthcare on a family insurance on a, say a support staff person, you, the district will pay, and I'm, just, I'm ballparking the numbers, about $25,000 for that person's family for medical insurance is the district side of the house on that versus you know what they would pay through the business world, you pay a whole lot more if you have family insurance. That's kind of like we call the real world and then there's the school world. Mm -hmm. So you really kind of, that's why we started that outsourcing pro per, the, the process right. for support mm -hmm. staff. It saved a lot of money. A lot of, a lot of businesses outsourced. Yes, and that's why we started this year. So what about like in the real world, uh, you know, you get direct hire or whatever, there is a company and then you get 401k is your retirement that you contribute to. But that if you're a professional employee or you're hired by a school district, you don't have that option. It has to be your, through PEASERS, your retirement must be through PEASERS. Only if you're outsourced, you're not through PEASERS, then you're through a 401k through the company, but only on an outsource. If you're hired directly through a public school district or some charter schools, 
um, then you must be in the teaser system. It's all part of how the law is written. And then school districts aren't allowed at higher, yeah, sorry. Um, the school districts are not allowed to hire outside of the contract. You can't hire a teacher outside of the collective bargaining agreement. Okay, more good news. Property, the next page is the property tax reduction schedule, just to give you an idea of what otherwise known as the slot money or the gambling money. In 2010-11, um, the slot allocations for the district was about 630,000. For the homestead farm state rebate that people got on their tax bills was 149. Um, 21, fast forward to 21-22, um, we got actually 629,000. Um, so it was only about $1,000 less, so $1,700 less. And um, the, the homestead farmstead rebate was $166,338. So that came in for the gaming revenue. That's been pretty consistent over the years between $630, $629. Um, the, according to the last thing that we have heard is that um, in 2021, the gaming revenue has been up in Pennsylvania much higher than it was the year before. So we're hoping those numbers go back up into the 630s, which means your rebate in the Homestead Farmstead will be back up and stay up in the you know, 166 to 170 range for each Homestead Farmstead property person. So the next page for you kind of gives you the impact that that state tax reduction relief has on a Homestead property. And what, um, what Ming put together for you is basically what it looks like on a $100,000 assessed property, $150,000 or a $200,000 property, um, so that you have what the fiscal year is in 2010 through 2021, what the mill rate was during those years, what the tax bill would have been for those years, what the tax relief would be, which was that, you know, kind of that homestead, farmstead, the flat, you know, the flat tax, and then what the change was, was for that, you know, across that time period. So that you could see what the bill was and then why is the tax relief and then what the change was. So if you take a $2,000 house, which is that last period, that with the, with the rebate piece, and then you have, uh, or the 11, 12, I should say, and then you had a $57 change in your tax bill. And then fast forward to 21, 22. And then really over the course of all of those years put together, they, the impact on that $200,000 property was $1,000 in 2027 To give you an idea, after all of those years and all of those taxes, um, that's what it was, the difference on that top of that property tax. And then that would be divided, of course, over the 12 months if someone had that in their mortgage. So, so who's qualified for homestead and farmstead? Uh, you have to send the debt application. You have to send it to the county, the Fox County Assessment Office. They are going to review and approve that. I think it's April three or twenty-three. Yeah, for five years. Mm -hmm. After you approval for five years, every five years you have to renew mm -hmm. that. Okay. And the uh, two thousand twenty-two, uh, Olivari, that's three thousand eight hundred thirty-nine uh, homestead farmstead approved. We saw that 800 last year. And sometimes what we found is that people just don't send the paperwork. It's just a form that you get. We have them, they're due well, December 31st, and then we send them out, the county sends them out, yeah. and people just don't bother to send well, them out. The county doesn't, didn't send it out, and um, they refer to school this, uh, to township. Township goes, well, we have no idea about this. And we were sending them out. I know we had them. School? Yeah, the, the, yeah, BCIU, we can't BCIU, BCIU, yeah, BCIU send out that. And then deadline is March 1st. So if you, someone didn't send it at March 1st, it's a deadline to yep. submit. After you, like, if you're over, um, so after uh, March like 1st, you have to wait till next year. So right. you just, uh, for the, all the taxpayer, if, if you own your house, you, you can send, submit an uh, application then web based on your information to prove that we do have a form if someone needs a form we do have one in our archive okay. yeah. I think this would be your primary residence I thought is that right I think yeah. so mm -hmm. the, I think this is your not, primary residence where you reside so if you own a, a rental property you can't get the homestead right. tax and that's just a place yeah. you live. Okay. 
I think and I thought that's anywhere. That's the farmstead. Yeah, the farmstead. That's the acres. Yeah, that guy. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't know. So that just kind of gives you an idea of how that whole homestead farmstead property tax reduction piece works, uh, which does help, you know, with, uh, with the bills. Um, the next page for you is the budget millage adjusted index history, just to give you an idea of um, taxes and what they've raised in millage, but also on how we've used the fund balance. And please keep in mind that other than 2122, which is yet to be seen, um, we have not used the fund balance. We have not used the fund balance that we have budgeted. Um, since oh, since eleven twelve to balance the budget, we have been for grant writing and some you know sitting on the budget very closely. And since then, we've not have not had to use it. Um, hopefully, this year we'll work out that well too. On wood, um, what's what we're trying for? But anyway, in eleven twelve, um, you had the budget increase was actually negative, um, but that was not a, not a really good year because of, of some other things that had happened. But um, with some freezes that took place administratively and it left some really bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. But um, but anyway, the adjusted index was 1.7, but the mill increase was 1.41%, which was $229,000. And you'll see your, your millage was 0.335. And then it kind of went up the next year, the budget increase was about a half a million dollars. And then in 13, uh, 12, 13 and 13, 14, with a very difficult years in which the the what was called stimulus money or the era money that was used to at that time prior to that was used um, to actually pay for people ran out and we had to lay off about 13 teachers a lot of elementary uh, it was not a fun time a lot of support staff um, and still raise taxes through all of that and then the millage you'll see that actually how much money in the orange third orange color over tells you how much money those mill is, mills brought in. So you see the millage increase in 1314 was 0.3733, brought in additional revenue of $253,000. And then your budget increase was 166. So you had a budget of 152. And then the following year in 1415, your budget went up $741, but your 461 mills was only worth 317. So the difference of that was your fund balance usage. So every time you use fund balance to balance your budget, is that like Mr. Richard always said, it was like starting in the hole the following year. It's like using your savings account to pay your bills every month. The next month you're already starting in a deficit. So that's why like this year in 21-22, your board balanced the budget at the 499 mills, which brought in $361,000, was a millage increase of 1.75, your adjusted index, which means you could go to 3.5% increase, which the board chose not to do, um, which was what, but the deficit was $1.2 million and the rest of that they used out of fund balance was to balance the budget. So that's the $1 million we're trying to make up this year without using that money in order to balance the budget. So we kind of start apples to apples and, and building the 22-23 school year. The graph at the bottom tells you the orange line is your millage increase. And then the blue line tells you how they could have raised the, the mill, how much they could have raised the millage and chose not to. So if you look at 21-22, they raised it 1.75%, but could have gone to 3.5 and chose not to. So the only year that those two things were really close together was the 15-16 year, school year, which was also the first year of the teacher's con new teacher's contract, which is always a, the most expensive year of a teacher's contract is the first year because of how it's fronted in negotiations. So why was 2018, 2019 those like 1.53% was like a divot in a graph? What was it contributed to? 1819 yep. was probably it was the year probably with a level of retirees um, going out. 1819 was a high level of retirees and the people coming in, the replacements were cheaper than those going out. That was the year before COVID. And we had a lot of um, every every so often you will have a group of teachers who come in together and they retire out together. So your next wave of kind of retirees that are going out together is in about four years. And there's about six or seven that actually started teaching together and then they will retire out together. Um, they kind of come in waves like that. And that was I think of it because that was like um, Joan Weidman. It was Neil. It was, um, I can just think of that. I read them at my graduation speech every year. 
There was probably about six or seven that year that retired together across the district. That's counted adjusted indexes actually calculated. That's not our calculation. No, the adjusted indexes and the indexes are all calculated by the Department of Ed. They are given to us in September. We have no choice, and it's all based on it has to do with aid ratios and your um, ADMs and the ADAs. And right? the, yeah, based on the market value of personal income aid ratio, and also uh, based on the statewide average week, weekly wage. Weekly, we weekly the, wage. Yeah, weekly wage. And also the data they calculate they use like two years ago. So it's not the current year. Yeah. But this is specific to our school district, or is that same, every, everybody's three and a half percent? Um, yeah, the, they have a base. Uh, every mm -hmm. year they have a base index. Right. That if all uh, market uh, A ratio is uh, above uh, uh, okay. uh, 0.5, they have adjust. So just a little bit adjustment. So we, we do have adjust, adjust uh, index every gotcha. year. It, oh, I always thought it was a rather arbitrary number. That's why I was wondering if there's any real thought behind it or just the states that here again. And we've never really approached it, so if there was an issue, it was always a question of mind. But so, how's the inflation gonna do this graph? Yeah, they have a formula. Um, they have they use the base. Okay, for example, if base the index is two point five, uh, two point four percent, then they they have to use the your a rate market uh, market value and. Uh, Personal income uh, a ratio plus 0.2, then times 2.4 percent. <laughs> this is a statewide um, formula they use that to calculate the adjusted index. And then the layman's terms. It's not going to change. <laughs> it's not going to change. Do, yeah. Uh, uh, no, inflation yeah. has nothing to do with this. It'll change a little, but it won't change much because it's all relative to the other school districts. So as it changes for us, it's going to change for everybody else. But it'll all stay within that kind of window. So as it'll it may come down a little bit, but it'll come down with everybody else. So what they'll do is just the, the base index will drop or go up, and then all of the rest of it will go up relative to the base to the base index. That's why you'll see kind of the base the the increases in the base indexes will change. It, that's why you'll see the ranges don't change much. We'll stay in that two, two to three point range and just fluctuates right within that. So properties are based on cool. since our tax are based on property, property. The properties are not affected by inflation. I mean they're not they don't readjust the assessments every year. So the so one is going to be affected is the first page, employees be employee retirement contribution rate. That would be, but it would not be until three or four years down the road. Once the actuaries set the next two to three years, and until the actuaries do their projections again, will that be all be will the new market rates and the new investment rates be taken into account? So it's all you have to remember in public education, everything is always two or three years behind. So like transportation subsidy is always behind, all of your, your revenues are always behind, everything is always behind the eight ball. It's never up to date in public education. Everything is back, everything is backwards. That's the problem with funding. It's sort of like the lawsuit that's the trial that's going on and fair funding and all of that. Anybody who's decreasing enrollment in small schools are going to get hurt by it. All the large school districts in like Southeast Corner that are growing but are going to make out well. The cities are going to make out well, but school districts like Holy Valley are going to get hurt by it. Fair funding. We'll lose funding. Because I got to take from one to give to another. It's like Robin Hood. I have a question on that. That's like the equal distribution where even though we live in a place where we're trying to make better for our children, they find it that they should take the money from this community to equally distribute it to the lower income communities. Correct. Because we talk about this, just all of your equity. So really, <laughs> living out here and paying higher taxes to get better education ultimately becomes um, you're just stupid because you're living out here paying higher taxes. Other, other. By, by our aid ratio in this community, we are considered a wealthy school district. Yeah, yeah even though it could be, but our enrollment is dropping because we are clean and green and it's an agriculture community by reputation. And because we don't have industry in our to go off of, which would then cause the inflation issue because that would inflation would affect the industry more than a, than a bedroom community. 
the, the fair funding formula is more it's going to positively affect more of Chester and Box that end of the world than it will here because they're growing faster and therefore they need they want the money the cities will because of the poverty well, the poverty there's a factor in there called a poverty factor so kill the farmers raise the cities so how do we fight back on that like as a community what's the method you need to get out of this community? Right now, it's all the trial's coming to a close. The trial's been in effect for probably 15 years, 90s, I think they started that, yeah. and it finally came through. It's all going to be interesting to see how it plays out. It's the same thing with people like that thing, and not that I'm, I hate to say this out loud, but I'm a proponent of school choice if it's equitable, because I don't think public education or parochial or private works for everybody. I think it's a parent's choice to have what they want, but let's have the rules be the same for everywhere. You know what I mean? Like. This should be equal across the board. Choose what you want, but let's all play by the same rules, you know. But at the same time, the, they they tout vouchers, but they're but vouchers. If we had went to voucher system, only Valley would get to decide who they take and who they don't take. So they could say, well, you can't come here like unless you get A's and B's. You can't come here if you're high need. You can't come here if you have trauma. You can't come here if you're a behavior student. You can't come here if you're if you're a low level special education student. You can't come here. You know what I mean? Like, so then how are you going to use your voucher? And, and then you're going to talk about discrimination. But the way the whole system's set up, it's only going to create one issue. You're going to try and solve an issue by creating a large issue. So then you, the city is then like, who's going to be left? And who's going to take care of those children? So, and that's really what's, they're going to funnel the money from one end to the other. And then the, even though, and not that there isn't issues with the funding formula, but how they're going about it isn't going to be equitable for all. So they're trading one issue for another issue. Because the issues that the lawsuit started with in the 90s are not the issues that exist in 2022. But it's another one that belongs in Harrisburg and not at the local level. Uh, the next one is the employer retirement impact. So just to try and um, you know, help people to understand the, the, the Harrisburg piece. Um, is uh, what this looks like on an employee. So if you take the graph and this chart in the middle, and we kind of took a, an employee who makes 45, our base <laughs> salary is about 48,000 for a teacher, 50,000 and 60 just to use round numbers. Um, so 50,000 in 2010, using the 5.64, the, you know, we were paying about $2,800 a year in retirement costs when a teacher was making $50,000. In 2021, a teacher who's making $50,000, which is basically a mass, a little less than master step one um, on, our, on the salary matrix. So you're now paying at 34.94%, $17,000 for that same employee in just employment costs. So at the last meeting, personnel meeting, when somebody in the audience had asked about the package, I think it had to do with the assistant superintendent position of why that position was like $200,000. You know, $200, it's not the salary was two hundred thousand dollars. You have to look at the benefit piece of it. So when you put the health care with it, and then you put the, the the retirement cost, the district net retirement costs on that position, then that's why those package, what I call the package prices, are what they are. So that gives you an idea of what you know what those costs look like, and they are non-controllable costs, but we have to pay them, and that's why what you'll see in the budget line items. That we're paying, but you know, we over two million dollars a year in just retirement, and over two million dollars a year in healthcare costs on the personnel side, and that's why you know over sixty percent of the budget, the budget is nothing but you know, it's personnel. It's it's basically salaries and benefits. So the next sheet you have is the value of a mill, which is you know, on the twenty uh, um, the value of a mill in a district in the 2011-12. The, the value of a mill was 685,000 and the value of a mill kind of determines the worth, so to speak, uh, of, a, of the district, in, the, in the, the value of assessment in the district. So that was $685,000, And then if you fast forward again, to, you can see how it goes up some years and it goes down some years. And that value of a mill will change over the course of a year as well. So as we work through the value of a mill and it has to do with property taxes and we raise it and you lower it and then we have to set it in May in order to get the, what we call the 2028, which is the official Pennsylvania Department of Ed budget that we present to the board in May for approval that has to set for 30 days, is whatever that value of a mill is when we do that in May. Um, and it can go up and it can go down. So if you see in 1314, the value of a mill actually went down $6,000. 
So then, and you go into 2021, that $685,000 from 11-12 went up to $725,000, which means that the property values in Ole Valley actually went up um, almost $50,000 over the course of that time period. And you can see the annual increases over the course of the year. And 17-18, the value of the, of the mill really went up. And for some reason, and over like $16,000, which I really don't know why, but it, it did for some reason in that year. And then you can see it in chart form at the bottom. The next sheet, um, there, people have said, you need to cut your budget, you need to cut your budget, you need to cut your budget. So what we kind of track over since 2010, the present, is really a list of everything that we have cut um, to date to try and save money or changes that we have made over the years um, to try and cut this. This doesn't include the years in which, um, I think it was 11, 12, where we froze all, t all salaries, which then had a negative effect on all administrators and support staff because that is compounding interest on all of our retirement, on our salaries. Everything else went up on teachers and they got theirs back. We never got ours back. Um, it did not go over well from a morale standpoint and a bunch of other stuff. I'm just looking at Doc because I know you're I'm shaking my head because it hurt you oh, it the hurt most, me big time. Big time. Yeah. Um, it's like you were the closest to retirement yeah. at the time. My luck. Um, <laughs> that, um, but these are the other things we on the left hand side were all the clubs intramurals. We were co oping. We were, you know, anything we created for kids, we tried to co op to save money. We were title positions. Um, we try to find other funding formulas. We, we cut academic programs. We cut business education. We cut facts, government consumer science. We cut our traditional woodshop programs. We cut the high school, you know, traditional library classes. We cut our middle school world language. We cut um, one of the Spanish uh, programs. We cut German um, high school and middle, Spanish and German out of the middle school. We cut high school German program. We cut our elementary and middle school typing classes. So seven elementary uh, teachers. We had to cut high school art. There used to be three high school art teachers. We had another elementary art teacher at one time, middle school music. And I'm not going to read them all to you. You can read them. Um, we've outsourced positions. We've cut numerous administrative positions. Um, that gives you an idea. We took our summers back to five eights instead of four tens. Um, we did that last summer to try and save, save money. Um, we are about out of cuts, like there's without going in and really cutting programs or increasing class sizes, you know, elementary are very fortunate. We're in the low 20s. Muhlenberg is pushing mid 30s. Um, there are other districts locally that are in the low 30s, high 20s in their elementaries. Um, middle school is anything from, you know, low 20s to, uh, to late to high 20s. High school, it depends on the course. You know, if you have an AP class, you can have seven or eight in it, and you could have other English classes that are in the mid 20s, depending on what classes. That's just you know the nature of high school and how your schedule falls, just because it's just a different different flow. Um, but there isn't a lot that we've looked at that there's not much left to cut. So in athletics, there's no we've looked at that every year. There's no money there. There's, you know, a whole you can wipe out a whole athletic program and maybe twenty thousand dollars. And then you have all those kids who go home after school and do nothing. What do you think we could do that get the parents to pay for it? In other words, instead of saying, well, if we don't do this, we don't do that, your taxes go up, or we can just you can just pay this, whatever it is, 200 400 500 dollars and then it's not tacked on to your taxes if you want to sell your house. Well, if you're talking about an athletic I'm talking or about student it. fee, we've discussed that years and years all and years and 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 I'll only speak for myself. Uh, when we discussed this, I discussed it as a principal and as a board member. Mm -hmm. We felt it wasn't it wasn't prudent to, to lay another bill on a family that maybe couldn't afford that two hundred and fifty dollars, and then their kid went home and didn't have a chance to wrestle, didn't have a chance to cheerlead, didn't have a chance to play the violin after school or any of those things. So we didn't want to because the really the only thing you can do with a student fee is athletics. Mm -hmm. That's it. Because you, you can't do you can't do your music programs, you can't do your ag programs. That's all provided for our school. That athletics is above and beyond. So you could put a put a, a fee in for parents that would cover the whole year if their kid would play one sport or three sports. That's been discussed. But 
the number was so, let's just say minimal compared to the impact on the families that at that point, the majority of the people said, it's just not worth doing that. So, I mean, that, that's something you could bring up again, like we're gonna see down the road here. I asked last, last meeting to have our field trip numbers come in. I'm pro field trip, but I'm not pro on the expense that it costs to send everybody where they wanna go. And when you see those numbers, you'll understand why I asked for them. The only reason I asked for them is to share with you guys exactly what I've been talking about for the last 16 to 20 years. When you look at the high school numbers down the road and you see $55,000, but you look at the elementary and you see like 2,800, you know, is there a way to fund some of that? Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But when you get down to it, it's another number. But yes, it's a possibility that, that you look at that. But again, at one point, we had 700 kids in the high school. We're 500, the ballpark number. And a lot of those things Dr. Shank just mentioned to everybody that were cut, you had to think about those cuts for years because, for, for example, family and consumer science, we lost one of the best teachers we ever had in that program. We couldn't find anybody else. And then the numbers of enrollment went down, plus the choices that students were picking you came down to like two kids wanting a typing class or one kid wanting a German class. So we had to go with that. And, and you don't want to hurt any student. But it came to the point where, as a principal, I was told, there you go. This is what you got. Make it work. And it wasn't that easy to make it work. And then at one point, like Dr. Shank said, we were slammed with the idea, well, you don't deserve a raise. Even though you did a great job, too bad. You know, and that, that didn't go over too, too well either, because, you know, we were at every athletic event, not once a week. We had an administrator from high school at every athletic event and event that took place. Every one. Did we stay 100% of the time? No. We were, there. we were there, though, and the kids knew that. It also helped a lot of other things like domino effect with discipline and everything else because you were there. But yes, you can look at that number, but when it comes down to it, the numbers we have, it would be minimal, especially when we have an athletic director that's doing one heck of a job trying to make ends meet with money. And because we don't have the big spending revenue of football, that's where people in other districts make a lot of money with football. We've been down that road too. So, so were any programs added? Did we add any programs? You know, we, we have a list of things that we cut. Were, were there any other programs that were added in this time step? Well, you have to go at all through your STEM activities yeah. and all through your... We, we changed. Yeah. We, we changed our science program into STEM. So instead of running what was that, principles of technology, yeah, we yeah. turned it into, retitled it into our STEM program. We took what we already had and retooled it into other courses. Those all those those classes were sculpted to look at what is down the road for our students. That's what we tried to do. We tried never to take a step back, take a step forward. And then sometimes it was difficult to take that step forward. It might have been a little step, but we still took that step forward. At least that's what I tried to do. So, um, uh, clubs, how are they run, and uh, is there any uh, pay attached to that? To the, to the staff. The after school clubs are all in the teachers, ones that are left. No, during the school too. There's no, there's no, there's no yeah. stipend. During the rise or links or anything. Any of that, there's no stipends for anything. It runs during the school day. It's all part of their normal job. Anything after school is that's in the collective bargaining agreement. There's a stipend for. And there's a co-curricular salary schedule with all those, all those uh, positions with the time factor and responsibility factor. And then they all have numbers that go to that. And that pot of money, usually is there, there's a total number on that pot of money mm -hmm. that, that's worked between Dr. Shank, the board, and the OBEA. And that number usually stays the same. If they want to adjust something or they say, hey, we'd like a different position, then they work it that the money stays the same in that code schedule. So then who decides what kind of clubs? Are there? During the day? Yeah. The, the kids do. Kids work with the teachers and the guidance counselor and their principal, and they they decide it changes yearly what clubs they run and what they're they do an interest survey usually at the beginning of the year 
as to what they're interested in and it changes your I mean there's clubs that run every year just because like weight training or um just trying to think of one of the ones that run every year like the chess club usually runs at the high school every year because they're interested in that and the student councils and the the Avidum runs that Scott got that running at the middle school and some of the others will run every year and then there's others that run when the kids are interested in it and some years they're not interested in it and they do an interest one and that's when they select and then there's advisors that sign up for them. Because some of the programs like say business education, the high school, uh, is anybody thought of having that run as a club? It's FBLA that's run by Mr. Hoffman. FBLA. That's a co-curricular. It's a paid stipend through the teacher's contract for that. I'm just saying, I'm just throwing it out there out of the programs that's been cut. Maybe there's, you know, have um, have a second look at them and see maybe that uh, would be prudent to put them as clubs. But during, I don't during think we teach the program as a club, though, right? I mean, a club is more for interaction and that kind of what well, or as but, program is a, but, is a, is a curriculum. But yes. I understand, so but the thing is, so. like, even the woodworking, you know, mm. instead of writing it as a curriculum, run it as a club. Oh, no. Mm. No, we need to no. woodworking. We should have a metal shop. A lot of these issues. Yeah, but I'm just mechanics. like. Yeah, I mean, these folks this here, is, I, mean, I mean, everything they're saying is absolutely true. And I come from an administrative standpoint, I can tell from just doing a board the last 10 years, really the kind of line that's saying we kind of drew is. I think it was like 10 students or less in a class, we just didn't run it. Because really it doesn't make any, in some cases, now AP classes are, are kind of out, you know, but like facts, wood shop, that kind of whatnot. If there's only four kids in the class, oh, it right. makes yeah. And that's how a lot of them just came to by, by attrition. So it wasn't necessarily, we sat here and said, no more, no more wood shop. It was like, we got three kids in a class, we're not going to run it. No, so it was, it was more by attrition. So when it says we, we cut program, it wasn't because we decided we just can't afford that program anymore as much as because it Because there was no sense. enrollment. Right. Yeah. So the kids or, go with their feet, we say. Or, yeah, and the things kind of like, you know, the fluid things change, the feet maybe not have the interest back then, but now that's kind of pendulum swinging the other direction towards the trades. It gets tricky because once it's gone, now there's no interest. It's, in that's hard interest. to be right. started, correct. Right. That's how we got away from, how many languages we even teach them? We, well, we do ours online. So we have more languages. We have a lot of languages. Okay. We're probably six or seven. But actually, language teachers, do we? Just Spanish in house with the rest of them all right. around. But we also don't demo demo TCTC. So if you want metal, you want wood shop, you want culinary, you want all of that other stuff, then you go to VCT. Because they have the shops, they have the expertise, well, they have the certification. So you won't, you won't, find, you you won't find a teacher. Right. No, no, no. They get it. And then you won't well, find a teacher to teach wood shop anymore. When no. you go VCT, they're not certified. Is, is there a fee? We pay. We got a VCTC? Yeah. We, yeah, we pay the VCTC bill. Yeah, it's the bill we just sold them. It's yeah. no cost to the student. Right. It's cost the district pays that. And they're still doing that only 10, 10 as well. Only oh, special education, right? Oh. Yeah, only very, very few cases. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I'm late. I, I was at the office meeting for the evening. <laughs> what I really do case with effort. Like, why if we have something, they have something. <laughs> what can we do to right. Right. maximize the student? Populations over there. Questions, you? I saw two hands up. As I understand it, some 10 years ago, um, before Dr. Shank was here, if I remember the student enrollment numbers of projections were much higher than what we're seeing as it projected mm -hmm. forward. Would you do your planning? Uh, I'll be honest with you, from what I remember, they're pretty darn close to where we are right now. I mean, at one point it was a 702. And then as we looked at it, when, and when Dr. Shank got here, we, we could see the projection. It, I bet it's within 20 of where, and, and it's so fluid too. You'll see it, it changes as, as the, the year starts and ends, but usually it stays within 10 to 20 of the number that she comes up with at the beginning of the year. Well, yeah. what I remember that may be incorrect, but my question would be, who determines, who determine those projection numbers, or is, one, is that once again, that's you by the state. No, that's, that's not fed. That's I do them every fall. Yeah. We do them. Okay. Yeah. There's all a, a, a statistical calculation that they saw. And that and Dr. Markley's right. We've been within 20 students uh, minus COVID, which screwed everybody up. But but yeah, we've been within 20 students district wide on what we projected versus what we've ended up. And we and we had to be close because of the budget. 
Yeah. Because every administrator knows they have so many kids in their building, so they have to order so many pieces of paper, so many of this, so many of that. And it has to it has to be close because you don't want to run out. Well, then the information I was given was incorrect. Then I guess the other thing is how far ahead that planning can get you in the trial. Uh, I would say this to you, it wouldn't, it's not going to get us into trouble because of where we are. Okay. But it could get a Muhlenberg, it could get a school that's constantly changing. Yeah. I'm talking like a Reading with, with thousands of, of in out students every day. Their biggest issue is attendance. You know, uh, it's very difficult for those that will right now. Their numbers at the beginning of the year was one number, and now they're like 18% higher. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, move in move out apartment complexes townhouses it's just but our numbers probably will stay pretty much okay. because of development yes so you're talking about the stipend for their college students and then you know the extracurricular activities that the teachers are going to have to contract yeah, yeah, yeah. additional mm -hmm. costs my question goes back to page one on this when we talk about the percentage that we support mm -hmm. Does that increase when they do new activities or is it based on the base pay? Everything is PEASERS eligible. Anything the school district pays out, PEASERS has to be taken out of. Exactly. So when they say I'm going to do something for a grade of $10,000 next dollar, we're going to pay. Absolutely. That's, 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 yes. Yeah, that's the way the law is. Anything, that's that's, is. anything a public school pays out and some charter schools as well, PEASERS must be taken out of. Um, how many children right now do you think we have that are in this, living in this school district that are not coming to our school? Um, I don't have the I don't have that, but I report that out at the second board meeting of every month. Okay. So it's on the website from last week's meeting. It's under the enrollment <laughs> report, under the administrative report. Okay. There's an Excel spreadsheet that um, we post, okay. and it's there. It yeah, it's board enrollment report. It's there. It's it's there's two. There's one that's called PIMS reportable, and what that means that's the ones we get money for. And PIMS non-reportable is your homeschool, your charter schools, the ones that go to other places we don't get credit for. That's kind of like if, if it says PIMS, that's the ones we get we get money for. If it says non-reportable PIMS, that's the ones that we don't that could show up tomorrow. That's that board enrollment report. So just email me if you have any questions on it. I break it out kind of the the money ones and the non-money ones. Good. The next one is your real property tax collection data from back to 10-11 to 2021. And basically it tells you what your assessed values have been for the district from that time period, what your millage rates have been over that time period, your tax levies, your collections um, for real estate, and then what your collection rates have been, keeping in mind you'll never collect 100% or rarely collect 100%. And if you do, it's going to be because they went out the collection, the delinquent collections have come in. That's usually why you get to 100%. Our tax collectors do a phenomenal job every year. Um, normally, you don't see tax collections on um, collection rates coming in much above 95%, but you'll see on the current year tax collection percentages, your, ta your four tax collectors are consistently 96 and higher, um, which is, is outstanding. And then when you put your, your delinquents on top of that, you're in the 99 and hundreds. That's kind of unheard of in school public um, tax collections. And then your delinquents are always turned over to the county and then they're collected um, through that. So you can see that throughout the years, um, the tax collection rates have improved with 1920 actually being the, the highest rate. Um, and then it tells you what you've been pulling in. So in 2021, you, you with, with delinquents, you pulled in $20 million in just um, in real estate collections. The next one is earned in, is your history on earned income tax collections, um, 10, 11 through 2021 to date. So of course, we're only um, halfway through the year. So you'll see it by month and you'll see how it starts to fluctuate throughout the year on earned income tax collections. And at the end of the year on 10, 11, um, you had 1.5 on, on EIT. 
And then you'll see it starts at one five, and then the following year at one seven, then it drops back to one five, and then it goes to one seven, then it stays at one eight for a while, and then it goes to one nine. Um, so it, it kind of gets, gets hard to try to project it, and then you try to base it on trends. So um, usually, right lately, your trends have been running about one eight, one nine on EIT on the collection rate, and then the chart at the bottom is another way just to try and you can see how it kind of started in the last you know, 10, 12 years, and it's actually been going in a positive direction. And then this year, um, we think we have been looking at EIT coming in about 1.9 million. But we are a little bit short, but this is only through, looks like it's through January at this point. But it can, you can see how it fluctuates month to month. The next one is just gives you an idea. These are um, assessed values. This is not what they pay in property taxes. This is assessed values, but it does give you an idea of who you're, we have to do this as part of the swap or um, another report that we have to do um, that's due in December. But it gives you of the last 10 years, the highest 10 um, property assessed property taxes or um, property tax payers, I should say in the Ole Valley. So for 21, and this is always a year behind, so it's 2021, it, it, they'll list out for you. It doesn't change a lot, um, but it, the, who's paying the highest assessed values um, in the district and what their assessed values are. So it's just kind of information. I'm not going to read it. I thought these guys, like Montgomery Acquisition. What? Okay, an apartment complex. I don't know. Right? I'm asking. Oh, no, no, there's a there's apartment complex here. Oh, no. It's a luxury apartment. Where do they have luxury apartments? I don't know. Off of 12. Oh, up there. Yeah, we have one group of one bank of those apartments. Mm -hmm. Off of 12. And it's just four of them. Yeah, it's four of them. We have four of them. Yeah. 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 The our board. So it's right primarily the real estate? Our border runs through yeah. that apartment yeah. Yeah. complex. Mm -hmm. Bottom floor. Yeah, we have four of those buildings are ours. Okay. Yeah, I got you. The luxury apartment. Yeah, right there. That is right on the line. Right on the line. Yeah. If we can move that line just a little bit over, it would help us. Pinebrook yeah. Farms. I just like to thank all those taxpayers on that well, yeah. <laughs> So basically, this is our re revenue, the biggest and the brightest. Top 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 so, and then how can we increase that revenue? So, obviously, we can, you know. Well, I mean, the revenue is based on property tax. So, I just think increased revenue is increasing tax. Because you have to change the township, you have to change the zoning. The zoning. Yeah, the zoning. The zoning. That's what we're doing. Come up with that. Yeah, that's what we're take there. There's been a lot of development only in. No, not necessarily <laughs> development, but also like, um, in uh, Top of Hawken, they have big revenue from putting those warehouses. Top of Hawken and Hamburg. Right. Yeah. yeah. That means you have, to, you have to zone something here, commercial, that they could build a warehouse and then, and then try and get the township to let you build a warehouse in Italy. The infrastructure they have versus ours is. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're, they're approximately We're not 78. Any of that. Right. Building a warehouse around here. I mean, not, um, not necessarily a warehouse, but also like I'm just thinking. No, I, yeah, we've all had ideas about how we could try and bring in, you know, there's not a lot of development. Some commercial. They, just, they just push back hard by it. Uh, any kind of commercial. Look how long we can turn the Oli Diner into a Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a Dunkin' Donuts. Could the farmers also have a commercial license? <laughs> <laughs> you want to raise your property tax? Yeah, where'd it go? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know. Anybody wants to open the shop? <laughs> okay. Um, the next sheet, the next sheet in your packet tonight is uh, Dr. Markley had requested that we put together a list of the 21-22 field trips for you to review. Yeah, I'd just like you to take a look at it for the next meeting. 
I just thought it was interesting. When you look at the last page, you'll see total district funded. And uh, just take a look at it. Not that this is something I think you should see uh, because of the numbers. I, I, please remember that the it, for those that you may not understand, might not know that the law is that for the when a student goes on a trip on a school day, the admission for that trip must be paid by the school district, or that attendance is illegal for that child. Okay. So if we if we decide that the students are going to um, Chocolate World tomorrow, that the district must pay that Chocolate World admission tomorrow for the fifth grade field trip. That or that child is illegally absent for school on that day. That's the way the law was written, which is why the admission charges are always paid. But you'll see them on the board agenda. The admission is always paid by the district because that's the way the law has to be. They go on a Saturday or Sunday. It can be fully funded by the by the, the parent or the child or the club or the organization. Um, but if it's during the school day, the admission always has to be paid by the district. The clubs, the student activities, all of the fundraising efforts by the students cannot is not allowed to be paid student activities cannot pay for adults they cannot pay for chaperones they cannot pay for chaperone lodging they cannot pay for chaperone travel they cannot pay for chaperone fees they cannot the student activities cannot be used for adults and that's partly why you see some of the wording the way it is on the field trips and that's kind of what drives that number that dr market was referring to is a lot of our stuff and some of these on here are also because um, students have made it to those levels as far as competitions as well, and a lot of those admissions are expensive. And it's an unpredictable number. It is not just so you know. At no time in 16 years of employment here did my number at the high school budget ever go above twelve thousand dollars for field trips, ever. And then I would have to answer to the superintendent as to why my kids were successful and we had to spend money. And I answered that to the board also, because mm -hmm. they earned that to go. But it never went above that number, and that's your wavy line as to what happens with that number of fifty-eight thousand. So just take a look at it, you know, for future discussion. No one said on Zoom that we're quitting, cutting field trips or anything. Just so you're out there in Zoom world, nobody said that. It's just a number to look at and some information. Okay, that would be cheaper. Yeah, if we underachievers. <laughs> They have to, right now they have to be vaccinated in order to, to go to New York. That's correct. Okay, so how are you managing that internally to make sure that the children are able to attend Yeah, the parents knew that when they signed up for the trip. They did. Yes. Yeah. Yep, that's all managed by the, com the company. They all knew that. And there's actually a trip within a trip going. There's an overnight for the upperclassmen, and then there's a day trip going as well. You know, in Bethlehem, they have this uh, place where beautiful musicals and different international artists come in. They're performing in New York. They're not just going to see a show. Oh. They're performing in Empire State Building, they're performing at Statue of Liberty, and they're performing somewhere else. I forget the third place that they're performing when they're in New York. It's not just going to have, they're not just going for fun. There's three or four performances that they're doing. Some fun. They'll have some fun. Yeah. Well, yeah. And the senior class trip that's on here was canceled. They didn't have enough. So they aren't going to Boston. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. 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 Well, everything but a mission. This one's still there. Law is the law. There's always back there. Okay. Keep going? Yeah, keep going. Okay. And then you have your spreadsheet, budget updates. Um, 2122 is still in the works, although we're in really pretty good shape. So as of right now, without using any fund balance, um, which you had budgeted, uh, where was I? Just, yeah. For the big stuff. Yeah. Wait, does anybody about that? The next sheet is this on the back. Oh, I'm sorry. That yeah, you'll need that. Yeah, the the last sheet in your packet, which I didn't have in my packet. I must have given it to Mr. Heckman. The, the was the real estate tax. That's your millage sheet that shows you if you raise the millage, whatever point zero, whatever, tells you exactly how much mill, how much money that brings in. 
So if you look at the orange uh, line, last year we raised the, the board raised the mill of 0.499, which brought in $364,486, which was 1.7 and made up the rest in the fund balance. Um, this year, we're actually asking for the same millage increase right now um, as the lowest milling increase, which are bringing the same at 364486 because right now the mills are worth the same amount um, with the conservative number. The other number is, is um, the 589, which is the other yellow number, depending on what the board wishes to do with staffing. Um, that's what that one is. And it does go up to the back page on that. The blue line is the 4% on the second page, and that is the index, the adjusted index. That means if the board chose to, which they're not gonna do, which I can tell you they're not gonna do, but if they chose to, they could raise the millage up to that 1.161 mills, which would give them an additional revenue of $847,642, um, which would be a 4% mill increase at 1.1. Um, they're not going to do it, but the state is saying that that's as high as they could raise the mills. There are districts that do raise the mills to the index every year. This board is not one to do that. They only raise enough to do what they need to do and also protect the district um, moving forward and raise them gradually as the expenses continue to go up every year to protect, um, to have a point where they don't have to get into the mess that we're in in 12, 2013 when we had to lay off all of those people because of what's known as a funding board. So that's what that last sheet is, and that'll come into play in, in a little bit. So the next sheet is the long one. It's on legal paper. Um, the middle, the first column on a budget 21-22, that was the approved numbers that were in what we call the 2028. The middle is what we're projecting, that is in red. The bottom of the first page is the one million dollars, one million twenty-two seventy-seven. That was the fund balance that was used, which is like a savings account to balance the budget to prevent having to raise the mills any more than that 499. They took money from the savings account and balanced the budget. Right now, we're not planning to use any of that money. That is my goal. Um, and we are working on closely to do that. Right now, we are uh, 346,000 short. It's only February. I'm not worried about it right now. Um, we do have a $300,000 um, adjustment we need to make in the technology budget from the sale of the laptop that we're still need to do um, Ming math and um, credit that out and put it where it needs to be. I was just trying to work with Mr. Rothenberger in order to get that fixed um, for where that goes and then the, the payments for the lease. So other than that, that's still in play. Working on that, I'm um, kind of aggressive on the expenditures, conservative on the revenues, but that's normal for February. We'll continue to work on the 21-22 and update that for you for next month. 22, 23, 22, 23 revenues are pretty much on for we are actually a month ahead of where we normally are at this point. Um, this is tying out. Um, so we're just going to be waiting on, on decisions from you. Revenues are pretty much coming in where we need them to be for next year. Um, we are hearing that they're we're not sure. The governor's budget is very um, aggressive. We are not hear, hearing that we're going to get anything close to what he's saying we're going to get. Um, so what we did is budgeted 50% of what he says that he's going to give us, because uh, if we do even get what he says we're going to get, we're hearing that it's going to be ESSER money again, and it's going to have strings on it. So we'd be very careful of how we spend that if it comes. So there's 50% of the basic ed in here, and there's 50% of the special ed. We are more confident of the increase in special ed subsidy than we are in the basic ed subsidy. Charter school reform, I've been hearing that for 10 years. I don't think we're ever going to see that, at least in, in my time in education, because um, that's just, it's too political. And I think until Harrisburg gets their act together, I don't think any of us are going to see charter, charter school reform when it comes to um, equitable tuition costs across the state, uh, just because they're too politically entrenched, just my professional opinion, and doing this for 30 years. The other piece on this um, transportation subsidy is kind of up and down right now, but it's kind of hard for us to predict because of the number of buses and, and vans we've had to cut because of the lack of drivers, what that's going to do to subsidy. And remember, subsidy is always a year or two behind. So you're not going to see that in next year's money. It's going to be a year or two out um, when that comes into play. And due to COVID and closures and all the rest of that, our, our subsidy is going to be a little messed up um, because of, of how those calculations come into play. 
So basically you, you will see an increase in your vocational education subsidy because remember we did get STEM approved as an official CTC, just like BCTC is. So all of our completers, our NACTI completers, which STEM has a large number of, is now going to bring you in a considerable amount of money. 70 is a conservative number. We got 70 for this year. Our numbers are going to continue to go up. So you're going to see more there. Um, and we are actually starting the beginning of our teacher academy and CTC and getting that approved as well for our secondary students where BCTC takes care of the early childhood component. So we started that preliminary, um, which doesn't really have a large um, expense to it, actually, because we have the people in the certifications now. So you'll have that, but you do have 50% in, in special ed, 50% in the basic ed subsidy there. The retirement calculations, Ming talked about the percentages, that's factored in, in here. The ESSER funding is out of Title I, that's why that's dropped back down again. You'll see no era ESSER money in grants coming through. We're not hearing of any more of that coming out. Um, so that's back down again. Um, local sources are basically the same. Um, coming through. We're not anticipating anything there in revenue. Any questions on revenue? It's always easier. When the, um, basically when you're going through on the major increase on the salary side is we do have um, increases, a lot of column movement among teachers, which drives your ESY costs um, and your summer programming, which we do have running our primary summer academies again next year to try and prevent any kind of learning loss. Um, so K2 is coming out with those. Um, ESY, we do have a number of students that are qualifying, so the numbers are going to be up there. We did miss it. Is our projections for 21-22 in that line. And 60 is going to be higher than we anticipated, which, which is not a bad thing. We also have more tutoring going on after school, that kind of thing. So that's why that's up. Our projections are up there. Professional staff is up for 21-22. That has the LTSs, which is the five ESSER, ESSER um, funded LTSs, which do go away at the end of the year. That's why that's so high for 21-22. Does drop back down for 22-23 because they go away because of the MOUs. They are not sustained positions. Um, medical is still seated at 4%. That will not lock in until late April, early May, of whether that comes back down or not. We are hoping that if it comes down, it comes down a little bit because the trust has gone zero to zero. And then what they tend to do is go zero and make it look good. And then they come back at you with a six or 7% increase instead of doing graduals, um, which is not good for people, especially your retirees and people on healthcare. It's better to do a slow gradual than it is to hit them with a large one overnight um, in one year. So that's still seated at a four. That may change going into May. Like a retirement, tuition reimbursement, all that stuff is pretty much the same. Buildings and grounds will come back down. Buildings and grounds is high 21, 22 because of the extra repairs are all in there. Technology we talked about that has the lease payments in it. Transportation is down because of the we had cut um, two buses because of lack of drivers. Tuition of other schools is up because of the mental health issues that we've been dealing with. Charter schools are starting to come back down as we're getting students back, which is nice. Same thing with our virtual students are coming back. BCTC numbers we've already gone over. Um, line 106 is up. A lot of that is behavioral uh, supports and mental health. And then, Dr. Uh, Shank, yeah. Line 54, that increase, is that because of the extra administrative hire? Yes. Okay, just one check. Yeah, that's the extra administrator, and it's down this year because we went half a year. Right. Just want to make sure everybody has a question. No, usually I do colors because then I remember what I already confirmed and what I didn't. So the red will actually be probably purple or blue the next time you get it. So good point. I appreciate that point. I agree with like you. I'm yeah, I'm gonna go with the purple next time. I yeah, that. and then the right column when I lock that when we cross when we lock out the what's yeah. in the computer, then the right side will actually be a different color. She's got screen. it all mapped out in color Sorry. I, I color code it so when I know what I've changed and what I did. You'll see the change. 
By the time you get it, it'll be a different color. It's just like kindergarten, you know? Okay. I'm a musician. Everything's Thanks color. for bringing that up, though. I, I support it. That. It's the only way I know what I change and what I don't. And sorry. I like red. Yeah, sure do. Um, other than that, uh, where am I? Copiers were good. That's good. Uh, I know what that is. Board services are all over the place. Athletics, SOS. Yeah, the rest of it is pretty much what it is. Um, and then we are seeing an increase in, in shipping. We're seeing an increase or delay in the supply chains again. If I in the cafeteria, we can't get food again. Um, yeah, it's no more kind of back to where we were at the beginning of the year. Why the increases in the building budget? Um, because they are, well, STEM supplies, technology. They are textbooks. Um, uh, especially second semester, we actually had some textbooks where the kids changed schedules that we had to get more financial ed, um, financial math books. The yeah, price of books are going up. The price of um, technology is going up. Price of supplies for STEM is going up. All of that, tech, anything that has to do with technology is going up. Is there any way you can get we don't we get donated what we can but a lot of the stuff is just it, it is what it is you can't get it donated i mean we do what we do i mean okay so yeah. how often do we have data textbooks um some of it is a matter of what we have and how many we, we take uh, what we get like we had more students taking financial math than we anticipated because it's it's a great course um so we needed more books because we had more students um, we, we don't update textbooks and every time we write curriculum. Um, right now, we're only updating textbooks for next year is for next year's budget is middle school ELA and chapter books. Um, elementary math is 23, 24. Science is probably 24, 25. And that's going to be a big one because that's K-12 because all the science standards change for the entire state. They just changed the entire science standards. For everybody, um, most of uh, English is done. Science is done. ELA is slowly being done. High school is done. Um, Hold on, the science changed. Yeah, the entire science standards just got so reapproved. Now, like all of the science, science is like the same thing. The whole science is now based on the national science standards, next generation science standards, and NSGS, GG. But anyway, they um, that has to be done. Um, algebra one that the high school is being rewritten, but they don't want new books. Um, geometry is good. There is, should be a lot for text for next year. So, but it's really filling in, like they may have a set of books, but then they, they don't have enough in this course or not enough in that course. It depends on what the students are taking. And then some of the books are just, well, you know, they're not in good shape, so you can't give that to a student. So you need to replace a couple books here, a couple books there, and then we buy them used. So you don't really buy new textbooks, or buy used textbooks. Those uh, are cheaper, but they're still 60 bucks a piece versus 100 bucks. I know there is a big push to ditch that common core. So if this to happen in the next couple of years, are we going to be changing everything again? Um, they would have to change the school code to change common core. I know a lot of states walking like really considering walking away and some had done that. Yeah, they, in Pennsylvania, they wrote it into the school code, in chapter four of the school code. So they would have to change the school code to get rid of the yeah, common core. Which changing anything in Harrisburg could take forever. So I, it could happen. I mean, it, okay. Well, that note though, let's move forward. So basically, the last sheet that you have for tonight is what we call your cut sheet or your projections. Um, what we are recommend, what depending on what you do with staffing. The left hand side is your long range staffing plan, which kind of has everything on it, um, what you would need in the next two to three years, but I'm not going to dwell on that. The right hand side or the middle column where it says budget 22-23 is the, the original list that we started from last month is the high school bio, which is a new position, the assistant superintendent full year. The two on, I broke these out for you so that you would see them individually. 260, the assistant superintendent secretary. 260 just means it's full year, 260, 160, 260 days. Their operating budget, which is about $10,000. The retirement of the library para is a, a savings of 46. 
Retirement of the elementary reading specialist is a savings of 36. The HRPR position is an additional $5,000 to the budget. The retirement, which was a replacement we would need, but it still saves you 44. Retirement of high school social studies saves you 56. And then if you are going to, if we're going to continue to have book challenges and all the issues with our books here at the library, you're going to have to add a professional certificated librarian to the high school library. I'm not going to be able to staff it with my backup plan, um, which that position is a master's degree person is about $87,000 salary and benefits. So your next column over was another, um, somebody brought up at the personnel committee earlier this month was not to have this, this um, superintendent position. You can um, put that in red by any chance, that next call. <laughs> just to, no, I'm just kidding. Just Perfect. Okay, so you're right now, you're on the column that says, yeah, I knew, no, or you're at the next one I'm where on it's 975. Okay. Yeah, I'm at the one with the nine. The nine seventy five eight six six. Yep, and that's uh, so. Then you had brought. I think it was you had said that you were not in favor of the assistant superintendent. I did say that. So this would be the high school biology person, because our lab classes are getting too. Uh, numbers are getting too high. Um, which takes that out, which takes the secretary out, which takes their operating budget out, but leaves all the other positions in. And then the last column, I believe it was Mr. Heckman who suggested, you know, I think it was you, that uh, about the half year assistant superintendent. So that I just took the number divided in half. We would we would work out your ex, you know, you give us a date, we work out your official numbers, but for ballpark would be the 99, the 30, and then the five thousand dollars for the half year. So then you go to the bottom where it says totals. So the first number, the 1.2 million is if you did everything in the first column, which is your full year assistant superintendent position, your deficit is 1.242332, which at the 589 mills, and I made this in a only blue for you, Beautiful. is 430,178 in mills, fund balance usage at 812154. If you did no assistant superintendent, that would be the same 589 mills, only 430,000 from the fund balance, or the half superintendent, assistant superintendent, would be 589,382 in, in fund balance usage. And then the bottom one, which is the 499 mills, which is the one that I'm working towards, would be the, if you get the full year assistant superintendent, you'll be looking at 877,846 in fund balance usage. Or no assistant superintendent at 364.486 in fund balance usage, or half an assistant superintendent at 655.074. And you got your calculator out. So what's wrong with my phone? 43138. Okay. This would be this minus 430. So it should be closer to 500,000. Just that, this one here. All right. What's the number? I didn't do it yet. <laughs> Which one's wrong? The second, second one. Same where, where it says 43178 at the bottom. That's here. wrong. Yeah, because it should be. So what is it? It should be this one minus. Is that with a 928 minus 430? Minus 928. That thumbs here. She's doing it wrong. Yeah. She's probably going to beat me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's getting the four ninety eight, four eighty five, four nine, four seventy five. But pretty cool. Four ninety eight, four seventy five. In in place of that four thirty one seventy. Repeat that four seventy eight. Should be a minus four ninety eight, four seventy five. Too far. No. You only feed me by two seconds. Not bad for a music teacher. I had to clear it three times because I. And you're an engineer. I'm, I'm just a music exactly. teacher. <laughs> yeah, but you had the normal math. We only count the twos and threes, though. I'll start over. So by the next meeting, you want a decision, or you want a decision tonight on that superintendent? Are you going to? We want to wait till our next meeting and make a decision. Then are you okay with that? She does not look okay. She's still thinking. She's in the thought process. I am in the thought process. So, tell her scheme question. The 
I guess the, the uh, you can make a decision on. I mean, that that's your decision whether what you want to do with that position. I'm I guess, just saying, do you need when do you need that done by? The that, sooner, sooner the better, right? Well, the sooner the better for that. I mean, that's your decision as to what you want this transition plan to look like or whatever. I guess the one I need, to, what I need to know is I need to know for, for well, for scheduling purposes. Um, it, this replacement on social studies, I'm good to hire. Because wait, wait, where's, wait, on social studies. Retirement on the high school social studies, I need to replace him. I need to replace the third grade teacher. And the bio. And I need I need the new bio. I need new that bio. bio you, need, you need that new bio. I need that new bio desperately. And I don't want to be behind the hiring curve because if I get behind on this hiring yeah, curve, well, and you're no not going to get them. There, you won't get them. I won't get them. I know. That's like. So the high school biology teacher placement. And I need to know whether I can get rid of this library or do I have to find a library person? Because that's one of the problems I got to figure out. I'm not going to support the library person. Yeah. I know, but I can't have 50 million. I can't have book challenges without somebody standing here worried about what's in this library. Well, anyway, uh, if, if, it, if it's a challenge to a book, then we have a policy that will go through the policy committee and the esteemed Dr. Facken can redo that policy that as a librarian, as one of the members, or we can figure out a way to get somebody else as a librarian. We have people that we can pay overtime if we have to. I'd rather not. But for eighty-seven thousand dollars, I mean, our parents should be able to decide what their kids want to read. That's just my thought. Uh, just like they decide on mask or no mask. Can I offer a suggestion? Oh, certainly. Can we just mark books like here's your A class, here's your B class, here's your C class book? And parents say, I don't want any of my kids reading the A class books, but they're marked that one. But, but that's, that's, who's going to decide that? But that's yeah. a judgment. That's, that's a judgment. judgment. That's all you would need for the curriculum. No. Who, who well, that? but they still rate that. It's yeah. you rate the movies. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't a movie. This is well, this is freedom of speech too. And I'm sure they have ratings in the book. Uh, so no, I, not really. I have. Anyway, uh, well, just a thought. Movie. If there's a challenge to a book, and we don't have a librarian who's, and I know that's one of the people that are supposed to be on that committee. I would refer back to you and maybe bring that committee to our next, bring that topic. Okay. And and that's something we need to look at because unless, you know, eight or nine people, I know one person is not going to vote for a librarian at eighty-seven thousand, and the chances of finding one are slim and none. But that's just and, so what? And, but so we don't have eighty-seven thousand. We do have one now. We we have one who is right. leaving. Right. Sort of. I have one now that oversees this collection and chooses the books and does all the rest of it. And I have actually have him pulled out part of the day right now to oversee who's checking out what and monitoring the collection based on the challenges. And I've backfilled the position with someone else and refilled that to make sure that we are watching who's going around the library and checking out what books to make sure that we have a certified staff member for liability purposes overseeing the library. How did we get these books and get in the books? The librarian helps select the books because mm -hmm. he's a certified librarian. So uh, librarian yeah. selected those books that now being challenged that now the librarian have to be in uh, well it's a committee. If you if someone challenges book, you fill the form out and then a committee sits and down you, and then they come back to us and say, you know, then we have to make the final decision. Plus the librarian didn't pick these books carte blanche. It was not like no. you went out and said I want that book. They all had to be approved. They all had they had lists from but they, 25, 30 years ago, some of these books were selected. Yeah. Right by the librarian before the librarian yeah, we have now. The librarian. But the librarian who selects these books chooses them from the high school library list from the high school house li librarian group, where the librarian who had been overseeing the librarian after this person retires is doesn't network with the high the high school librarians. The other two librarians network with the middle school list and the middle school librarians and the elementary librarians. They aren't in the high, they don't they aren't you're asking like an elementary person to understand the high school world. That's not fair. I'd be like to ask a third grade teacher to come teach high school English. That's that's not fair. I'm going to ask a very simple, basic question. How often do students come in here and use this library? They don't. They don't. For book purposes, they don't. They don't. They come in here to work. I mean, I, we they don't work. like the they idea work. of having yeah. books available, they but work. quite frankly, but, but, they use the library, but they don't use it for books. 
What do they use it for? Just they, they come in, they do their BOL, they do their virtual, they do, they use it for study hall, yeah. they use it to take tests. This is our learning center. We do. Yeah, I, I love the idea support. of having it, but if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. And, and listen, when I was in that, I'm going to bring back Michael find a book that had an F on if you found one. Yeah, but that's not, a, that's not the world these kids live in. I don't care. I know, but that's not the world they live in. Yeah, but I don't care. You can't be having books in here that, that exactly. have the explicit scene yeah. where, you know, Thirteen books that they're not funny. No, and that's, that's your, well, and, that, and that's your, your, and that's your opinion. And you're entitled well, to this it. Is well, not that's not an opinion. Library. Well, it's, it's your library. opinion. That's actually not an opinion. Well, it's your that's opinion that you you don't want a book with an F bomb in it. I'm not exactly or, Mr. F bomb either, but this is also speech. freedom of speech a lot of times, and we're not even using it. It's freedom of speech, and a lot of these kids have have laptops that they can do anything they want. And thank God their parents are there to watch them every minute of the day, so they don't do those things. Well, they call Jim Rothenberg and say, "Hey, could you please cut out that access to that opportunity?" Around the filters. They get around those filters. They're the best. Nominate Candace. But anyway, that's another topic. Discussion. This, this is budget and finance. You've got lots of time on your hands. And uh, I have a feeling it's going to come up again, which is great. I'd rather just take the books out. Well, that's another, another option there. Are you seven thousand dollars take the books out and turn in a large new construction room? Well, you just about went that way, and uh, it, it was quite an interesting journey that I was on, even as a principal, to see what had the transformation. Because I used to have a librarian, and, and God bless her, um, that was, let's just say, persistent. That's enough laughter. Uh, very persistent. And uh, I, I really had to watch the budget on, on lists of books that were coming in. And I spent hours, trust me, hours, but I couldn't read every book that might have had enough bomb. I couldn't. And, and you know what? I tried real hard to read a lot, especially at basketball games and wrestling matches. And I tried, but I just couldn't do the five or 600 books that she wanted that were all put forward to every school, every school in Berks County plus the state had the same list of books that came through. I, garbage I just use the F bomb as an example. Oh, I know. Okay. I know. But I, my, my biggest problem is the pornographic depiction in a book. That's the problem, period. End of discussion. That's uh, not, I hear you. Yeah. Garbage that is garbage out. No, it isn't. It's your opinion, though. Well, well it's, not, it's not a matter of fact. It's, it's just a, your it's opinion. Not, if it's in there, it doesn't it, belong. It's well, again, I, well I it's, it's, that's why there's a semantic library and bookstores, right? Uh, uh, any other questions on budget or finance? This wonderful, wonderful, very, <laughs> what you're going to not, no color yeah. stuff. No, I, I think you're going to color. No, not color. The, the Fair Funding Act, I think I'm, I'm going to probably have five years about this. My question is, we have a problem now, and it's not our problem, it's their problem, it's like you keep for example. They're not paying their taxes, they're not even giving their schools the money that they need to fund them, but then we have our community where you just hear the state worker, you know, your taxpayer don't need that. Well, that's what they're doing. 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 Look at the Berks, look at Berks County and look at the number of percent that we got compared to everybody else. And I know what kind of job and I know what kind of job we're doing for our kids. Yeah. Look at the percent raise that we got compared to the other schools in Berks County. The state will argue, and I agree with 100 percent the state will argue the fact that we don't go to the maximal allowed. Is yes, that's what they're going to say. We didn't go to the maximum. 3.98 percent every year. The state would go. They're spending they're spending more money. Therefore, give them more money. Right. We keep our taxes at, at well oh, below 25% really of that rate. Yeah. And, and we're actually uh, penalized yeah. by the state because of that. Because we're not raising our taxes to the maximum. It's the same thing as business, right? They're not asking for a million dollars a year. Come back. No, that's a communist business. I'm sorry. No. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. But federal funding? Federal funding is always going to be low. Oh. It's just because of how it, it how it works. It's based on your 
it's a little rougher now because of how we don't have true numbers for our free and reduced population because lunches are free right now for everybody. So they're not getting, it's interesting because we don't have the paperwork for people to fill out because everything is direct serve is, um, is free. So a lot of our people on our income who have filled out the paperwork are filling it out. But our number of direct certs, which is you fill it out online for other services, whether it be medical access or you need um, SNAP or you need other services through the state, those numbers are going through the roof. Just as you know, we, we talked about our homeless numbers and our foster numbers and all the rest of that are really going up this year. So we are actually, although we don't reflect it because you can't really ever count on it, sort of like you know the governor's budget, we don't really you can never count on the number he actually gives you. Um, we are seeing our numbers going up. Um, so we are anticipating that our federal or our, what we call our title numbers, our title numbers probably will go up. Um, but what happens is they give it to you up front. They tell you your numbers are going to go up, and then they do this thing in January called sequestering, where they take some of it back from you um, because they realize they gave you too much, and then they don't have it, so then they take it back. So we always estimate low. Um, and then they, if they have CARES money left, then like they did this year, then they give you some more, and then it all goes back for us against salaries and benefits anyway, because that's the only place I budget for it, because I try to use it for expenses that we already have to pay anyway and not for new things. Um, which then ends up saving it in other places or maybe help pay for something we otherwise couldn't have gotten that we need for students, especially in elementary, um, which is actually going to help us with some of the reading changes we're making down there on our diagnostics. But anyway, the, um, so federal should be able to hold. The problem is with federal is it's the IDA passwords. So federal uh, I, special education costs so much more than we ever get in money. And it comes from the federal government, then it comes to the state, the state takes the top, takes their money off the top, then it comes to the IU, and then from the IU, it comes to us. So we don't ever get what we think we should get. So you have to kind of go on the conservative level. But we won't see a lot of that, um, and especially given what may be coming in the economy and all the rest of it, that's why we're going to go conservative and hope for the best later, because it's easier to always be up and then end up with money left at the end of the year or be able to do something else or to get ahead or maybe to be able to supplement or to have it to use to not use that fund balance and then you have it to use the next year which is why we've been trying to do it is to say to go low in that 49 mil 4.499 mils on the lower end and not use the fund balance which is what we like that that what we call the fees or savings account money we've not had to use that with the goal of every year we didn't have to use that we've been able to keep the millage down as low as we can get but as Mr. Heckman said, that's hurt us in the long time because then we don't get the money from the state. But at the same time, why arbitrarily raise your taxes if we don't have to raise them any more than we have to? But if you don't raise them slowly over time, then all of a sudden you go from nothing to either losing a lot in teachers, raising class size, losing programs, you know, full day kindergarten, and all that other stuff that you hear the crazy stories, you know, across the area or county or tri county area. Or you go from nothing to a 1.1 1 .1 and then everybody loses their mind because all of a sudden you haven't had them to not understanding how did we get from here to here. And that's why we, we use PEASERS because one, it's a non-controllable cost, but it's the easiest to see where how we went from $300,000 in basically 11, 12 years to $2.2 million by something we had no control over that happened in Harrisburg. That they made a decision one day that if, and, and we're small with less people from like 270 280 employees to maybe 215 today and you're still at 366 to 2.2 .2 million with a whole lot less people imagine the, the larger districts who are going the other way and hiring more people where they are today in just one category let alone health care let alone salaries let alone all the rest of it so thinking about all this, if we are going to be part of the now we're talking about these changes that we've implemented in the last sheet, right? Now we're gonna we're talking about assistant supervisor. We're also talking about you know, positions that you dropped off when you look at the other ones, right? And we can take those and logically say, what's our what's our backup plan if we lose say five hundred thousand dollars in funds? Discuss possibly extending Dr. Shack's contract if that is the resolution to this of saving money. That is my understanding that that's something that this board would not undertake. And that's another discussion for another time. But I will entertain this. Would you tell me again 
just to refresh the board, the list that we should make a decision on from high school biology down that list. So if we have enough people, I want to get the best people for our kids. What I what I need as, to know as soon as I can get you that that we're okay, if we can do that, that would be the best thing for our kids to get the best people to teach them. So I mean, you're looking at high school bio and what you're. I need bio. I need the reading specialist. The reading specialist. No, third grade. I need the elementary position. I don't know if it's going to be third grade and or social little studies. Little and I need social studies. I need to post those and move on those. Uh, with with this board, a committee first, committee members on finance, budget, finance. You have a problem with those positions? I mean, you don't. You, 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 you can, I mean, say them again. The high school bio, bio, biology teacher, because science is hard to find. I need as much lead time okay. on that. And I can tell you, like, it, we have a math position that just opened because um, okay. the young lady, she's great, but her husband's military and just got his orders. She's going to be transferred. So we're going to move on that right away um, because math is hard to find. That's awesome. No, that's a replacement. That's that's okay. all somebody would want to have. That's not. These are the, these are retirements. Retirement for the reading specialist. I need the HR position as soon as you can get me that. The third grade position, which is elementary classroom. Otherwise, you're dropping back to four and third grade, and that's not going to be pretty for anybody as elementary students. High school social studies because that affects staffing and that's going to affect their master, which we're building now. Well, that won't be easy. Either. Bio is going to that bio is going to affect their master too. So right now you're looking at high school bio retirement for the reading specialist. The HR, third grade retirement social and studies. social studies. I would hold on that HR. I'll hold on that. Okay. But the rest of it, if there's anybody has a problem with the rest of those, I mean, at least we can give Dr. Shank a go ahead to go with those. Mm -hmm. right. You okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. So at least yeah. you can go ahead with those, but uh, I'd rather hold on the HR for now. Um, what for replacement? You said the new ones. What about the replacement? Uh, like you mentioned math. Uh, that's just a standard replacement. That's just a replacement. Yeah, but shouldn't we start advertising now? Well? Oh, yeah, we already have that. Uh -huh. She will. Dr. Markley, I challenge you on the uh, HR position. Okay. And that it is a definitely needed uh, position. Dr. Shank is carrying so much of that burden now. And with all these other things we have going on with personnel and like it, it's a small dollar item. It is a small dollar item. I would really like to see us keep putting small dollar items. Well, I didn't say no to it. I didn't say no to it. I just said, said no can we hold for I understand. I'm sure we can get on the list now. Just get uh, moving on. Right now, tonight, I would vote no one. Okay. That's and just I would vote no. But I'm, I'm just not ready on that one yet because I'm still processing the overtime in the current position. I'm still processing the need and I'm still processing uh, 4.99 on millage increase when I'd like to go and keep it as low as I can. And I understand, I, I hear you, but right now I would say no tonight. I might say yes next month, but right now I just want to see things as we get a little closer to that time. But I hear you. Because I'm almost thinking if we have that new person, she's going to be helping to hire these new people that are coming on. Right. And well, I, I don't think. I don't know about that. I don't you think these the new line. committee you know, that can help you. I don't think these new people, no. I mean, the amount of people we have to hire is not going to go away. Okay. Because if you look at the certifications that are coming through, there's a third less PA certifications that are being given out now than there were 10 years ago. And we have people who are going to be retiring. So we're going to have a lot of people that we're going to have to be replacing. So I guess I'm a little lost there. Dr. Shank, maybe you can clear me up on this. Uh, Mrs. Jackson just said about this HR person would be involved in hiring. This will be a July 1 star. But I would start to train the person as soon as I know. But they wouldn't be involved in an interview process. I would start paperwork to... process, right? Well, we have that now. Yeah, I do most of that now. Mm -hmm. so but we also have a secretary that does a lot of that too. Why can't we also involve the personnel committee? Mm -hmm. That's another topic. Right now, I would say I would vote no for tonight, but I could vote no. I could vote yes next month. I just want to I want to talk about it a little bit more, but I hear that I hear Mr. Heckman loudly. But right now I'm trying to hold the line on and I'm holding the line on a lot of things. Five and five and five, and five. I still will disagree with Dr. Schenk about those budgets for the building. You know, at one point I had $150,000 for 200 more kids and 25 more staff. 
So, you know, I, I hear the STEM activities and I hear the numbers, but I'm also hearing, wait a minute, you know, are we just going to raise that because we have field trip issues? Then let's have a field trip category and we can down that road. But I'm just looking at it as a person who's trying to hold a cap on as much as I can. Five, and I know it's not a big number, but still it's $5,000. And there's another five, and just trying to hold as much as I can. But I want to give Dr. Shank the opportunity and our district to get the best teachers available for our mm -hmm. kids. And that's why I would ask, you know, what we just did, those positions, let's move. Um, but if, if the rest of you want to go forward and, and do the HR right now, you certainly can. I'm just a Oh, the guys no. As there. far as the positions, like the new ones, so when you say, look, uh, so basically you start advertising now, but you said the biggest influx is when at the end of a year. So it's now everybody's teachers. Now. Teachers, you want to move. Teachers fast. are for teachers are interviewing now for next yeah, year. Absolutely. Class. Okay. And there aren't many good candidates. Yeah. So that's why you want to start advertising right away. Yeah. Yeah. Get the best. So the, the person that we're looking to hire for the math replacement. Has already had three job interviews, but she wants us. And we want her. Yeah. And she's good. Is that the common call? Any she's other good. questions? She's still certified math and computer science, too. Okay. Any other questions in the back there? You're going to have nightmares. Mm -hmm. If you're done with the, the staffing questions, I have one pertaining to the library. Uh, is it true that the federal government is shipping books to our library? Is that true or false? From you got that one. Nobody's told me no, ever getting books from the federal government. I was in two meetings today with the superintendent from the county and never heard that we are getting books from the library. Okay, I heard that, that they were. My question would be do we have a way of uh, filtering those books, and yep. we have a right of refusal yeah, for those of books. You, you don't have to answer the question because they didn't show up yet. Okay. Not, not to my knowledge, and Dr. Okay. Shank would know if they show up. Well, and even if they do show up, it's like any. Those are all full. They're not put that. We don't, we don't take any donation until we've got it anywhere. You could show up with a part load of books tomorrow, it doesn't mean they're going to make it in. They could make it in the door and out the back door to the trash. We've done that with, with people who've dropped stuff off before. We just don't tell them it goes in that door and out the back door. It goes. We just don't take everything that you bring in just because somebody You'd wants to You'd be surprised what came in through that front door. And it, it doesn't matter. Just because it's free doesn't mean you take it. You know, that, that's... And I always thank them every time they brought it. Yeah, but it doesn't... I always thank them. If it's, if it's some, some bizarre I don't know, people, I guess they clean out their houses and think that we can use stuff. And if we can, we take it, but it doesn't mean that, yeah. you know. And it would be the same way. It'd have to be vetted like anything else we, we take as a donation. It needs to be school appropriate. Oh, question. You said that we had a huge increase in homeless. Mm -hmm. How, the, what drove it? Evictions. This week, uh, last, end of last week, we had four that were, four fam two families that were evicted. There also like a federal funding, something for the homeless, a state funding. It's in the McKinsey Vento Act. Uh, there's a whole kind of resources that, that works that we have supports for county supports. But that's what we do. Do you want these? Since these are done, can we take them out of the budget? So the only thing you have to make decisions on are these last pieces, so she can make her adjustments. Yeah, you can take them out, but you should you should probably keep them somewhere there that we can see that they're they were part of the budget. You know, if you could just group them and make make them a color, you know, <laughs> you missed that, didn't you? I was the question was, can we pull? Can we pull? I'll do this for you. Can we pull those couple positions? Yeah. And I ask that she group them so we don't forget and make them a color. Yeah. Do you want them in this be fixed in these numbers? Yeah. No. Just so we, you know, someone's forgetting. Just keep them there. Just we'll know that. Right. So you don't want them changed in the base budget yet. No, just we've right. given you the go ahead. All right. All right. Okay. All right. And I'll just make everything black from now. So no, no, you no, make no, it fun. Don't do that. that. <laughs> 
We'll bring our own crayon. Keep bring your own crayon. I didn't say well. Keep making fun of me. Uh, thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. I'm thank you for it. Too. Yeah. You